middle of Vibhuti Yoga. Krishna will describe his Vibhutis. Uh, we're on text 19. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Hantate Katarishyami Divyayatma Vibhuttayaha Pradhanyata Kurusheshta Nasyanto Vistarasyame The Supreme Personality of God had said, Yes, I will tell you my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjun, for my opulence is limitless. So, Arjuna has made his request to hear his vibhutis. Now the Lord has ag agreed. Yes, I will tell you these. Kata uh, Yishyami means in the future or uh, Hanta is an endearing term, like my dear one, something like this, and it indicates compassion. Like a father would say to his son or a guru to his disciple, Hanta. Uh, and Krishna says, Div divya yatma vibhutaya that I will certainly speak my divya vibhutis my superior glories not the insignificant ones like blades of grass and so forth because Krishna is controlling every blade of grass so he's not going to describe every blade of grass to Arjuna but just the pradanyataha the main vibhutis so this word divya indicates this. So there are so many vibhutis in this world. Actually in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam, Krishna describes more of his vibhutis to Uddhava. And uh, many of the same ones are listed, but then some other ones are also added to that list. So you can look at that someday and compare. We won't do that today, but it's something interesting to see. Uh, but in any case, if we see anything that is great in this world, then it should remind us of Krishna. Because that greatness, that splendor, beauty, power, it must come from some source. And it comes from Krishna. Because he's the janmadya yasya yataha the source of everything and we saw previously there was a list of different qualities also they also came from Krishna the Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur comments here he says they're all generated from the Lord's energy and should be meditated upon in relation with him according to the various degrees of their respective states of being so one should be reminded of Krishna when one sees these things in this world. Prabhupada also comments on the word pradhanyata, principal vibhutis. He says this is important because we can understand only a few of the principal details of the Lord because his features are unlimited, as he himself said in this verse. So it's not really possible for the conditioned souls to understand all of the Lord's power and vibhutis. Uh, so, and Prabhupada quotes from the Am Amara Kosha dictionary, vibhuti means some extraordinary opulence, exceptional opulence. So, he's seems that Krishna is pleased with Arjuna's expressions of love, as he said, param brahma, param dhamma, and he glorified Krishna's purushottam, bhuta bhavana, bhutesha, deva deva jagat bhute. 
and uh, Krishna was pleased by Arjuna's devotion and so he's quite happy to reveal. So he, he calls him Kurushesht, yeah, the best of the Kurus, as kind of reciprocation <laughs> for Arjuna's glorifying him so that he also glorifies Arjuna. <laughs> and that's what Bhakti means, uh, there's a reciprocation between the Lord and his devotees. The Lord likes to glorify his devotees, actually, also. So now he begins in text 20. Aham atma kurakesha sarva bhuta shayastitaha Aham adischa madhyam cha bhutanam anta eva cha I am the super soul, all Arjun, seated in the hearts of all living entities. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end of all beings. Uh, so Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur comments, speaking as Krishna, Arjuna, you should know, understand that it's only by one of my portions that I am the cause of all the vibhutis. So he says, Atma, and that is referring to his uh, expansions, or one of his portions. And uh, Mishnah Chakravarti Thakur says that it refers to the Antaryami of the original Prakriti, which is Mahavishnu. And... Uh, Actually, we understand that Maha Vishnu expands as Garbha Dakshai Vishnu and then again as Shiva Dakshai Vishnu. So they are actually all the same person <laughs> and they exist simultaneously. And it's described by some Acharyas just like when Mr. Sharma goes to his office, then he comes home uh, with his. Uh, wife and then when he plays with his children it's the same person it's just that he plays different roles so actually Mahavishnu and Garbha Daksha Vishnu and Shiva Daksha Vishnu they're actually the same just that they uh, expand into different places so uh, and then the word Sarva Bhuta indicates Vairaja or Brahma in other words, the super soul of the complete creation who is Garbhadakshai Vishnu. And, Vish and Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur adds, and because I'm within the heart of all the jivas, I'm also Shiradakshai Vishnu. So Prabhupada, uh, throughout this chapter, in the, here in the beginning and at the end, he mentions the super soul. So he's, Prabhupada stresses that portion of the Lord. So Bhuta, Sarva Bhuta Shaya can not only mean all the living entities, but it can also mean uh, Brahma. Uh, who is the, like the super soul of the creation. And now uh, we see Krishna calls Arjuna Gudakesh, the conqueror of sleep. So the Lord is indicating that Arjuna is capable of meditating because he has conquered sleep. Because if you're sleeping, you can't meditate very well. <laughs> and Prabhupada uh, adds that uh, one who has conquered the darkness of sleep. So. He explains that for those who are sleeping in the darkness of ignorance, it's not possible to understand how the Lord manifests himself in various ways, either in this material world or in the spiritual world. So Arjuna is awakened being. He is a devotee, so he can understand what Krishna is about to explain. And Prabhupada adds, at the end of the first paragraph, because Arjuna is above such darkness, the Lord agrees to describe his various opulences. And then the Lord says, Aham Adis Chamadyam Cha Bhutam 
Putanam Ante Evacha, that I am the beginning, middle, and the end of all beings. So this is of, of all sentient beings. And Baladevaji Bhushan comments that I have manifested to create, maintain, and destroy. By my energy, I manifest the material world. So, good Akesh, you are good at meditation. So meditate on the fact that I, as the, as the super soul, am in the heart of all living entities. Yeah. Arjuna wants to meditate. He wants some details. So he says, okay, now you are good at meditation. Now meditate on this fact. Hum Atma, Guru Kesha. I am the super soul of the universe and of all the living entities. Okay, 21. Adityanam Maham Vishnu Jyotisham Ravir Angshaman Marichir Maratam Asmi Nakshatrana Maham Shashi Of the Adityas, I am Vishnu. Of lights, I am the radiant sun. Of the Maruts, I am Marichi. And among the stars, I am the moon. Uh, so that Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur mentions that Marichi is a special variety of wind. Uh, so it could be that it's not one of the names of the 49 Maruts, but it's a kind of special wind created by the Maruts, something like this. I guess we'd have to look in the Puranas to check all the 49 names. But I, I, I've heard that Marichi is not one of the 49 Maruts. I haven't checked it, so anyway, this is my hunch. <laughs> so you can check this, maybe, if you like. Prabhupada says there are 50 varieties of wind blowing in space, and of these winds, the controlling deity, Marichi, represents Krishna. So he indicates that... Uh, he is a, indeed a controlling deity, but also the wind. And of course, <coughs> of the stars, he says, I am the moon. Because the moon is the most prominent and bright of all the luminaries. But it's interesting, and Prabhupada comments that it's considered a nakshatra, as a star. So that indicates the moon and the stars are similar in nature, right? Because of the stars, I am the moon. The moon is not some separate kind of special planet. It is amongst the nakshatras. And we know that the moon is uh, reflecting the light of the sun. So Prabhupada says that it indicates that the stars do the same thing. So this is kind of shocking to cosmologists and scientists because they think that the stars have their own, they're like many, many suns. But Prabhupada says, no, <laughs> this is wrong. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting to see how there's no commentator that makes so many practical scientific uh, statements as Prabhupada, right? <laughs> yeah. And therefore he started the Bhaktivedanta Institute to further this type of approach in preaching. And Prabhupada said, actually, this is the most important of all my preaching. When in the last few months of his life, he told Tamal Krishna Maharaj was there and Srubdhamara Maharaj and he said that this is most important preaching to attack the scientists. <laughs> so if you have a little scientific background it's, you can use that in a very potent pre kind of preaching. <clears throat> because the scientists are considered the high priests of the material world. Everybody has full respect for them, they bow down, offering their dandavats to the scientists. You know. <laughs> so but their faith is misplaced. 
Next verse. <clears throat> Vedanam samabhirosmi devanam asmi vasavaha indriyanam manaschasmi bhutanam asmi chaitana Of the Vedas, I am the Samaveda. Of the demigods, I am Indra, Vasava, the king of heaven. Of the senses, I am the mind. And in living beings, I am the living for us, Chaitana. Well, that's all pretty clear. Not much to say about it, those. Rudranam Shankaraschasmi Vitesho Yaksha Rakshasam Vasunam Pabakaschasmi Meru Shikar Ramaham. Of all the Rudras, I am Lord Shiva. And of the Yakshas and Rakshasas, I am the Lord of Wealth, Kuvera. And of the Vasus, I am Fire, Agni. And of the mountains, I am Meru. It's a name for uh, Kuvera, is Vitesha, the Lord of Wealth. <laughs> Interesting. This Meru is the same as Sumeru the huge, big mountain in the middle of our Bhumandala. Purudha sam chamukyam maam vidhi parta prishaspatim senaninam maham skanda sarasam asmi sagara of priests, O Arjun, know me to be the chief prihaspati. Of generals, I am Kartikeya, and of bodies of water, I am the ocean. So here Krishna says, Aham Skanda. <clears throat> so is it correct to think that Skanda is Krishna? Or if we worship Skanda, it's the same as worshiping Krishna? Because someone could say that. Krishna says, Aham Skanda. Then they worship Kartikeya. Then what would you say to that person? <laughs> so then we can also worship lions. Right? Mm -hmm. So you can worship the chapels? <laughs> he doesn't embrace the chapels. Yeah. That's good. Okay. What else have we got here? Also the sagara, the ocean, it doesn't um, decrease. Or, I mean, the moon makes it change a little bit, but <laughs> we see that it's so great that it doesn't increase or decrease. It's always steady. So some things that that's great, it doesn't change. The ocean. Maharshi nam bragoraham giram asmyakam aksharam yagyanam japa yagyosmi stavaranam himalayaha. Of the great sages, I am brigu. Of vibrations, I am the transcendental all. Of sacrifices, I am the chantings of the holy names, japa. And of immovable things, I am the Himalayas. So Krishna says that. He's Brigu. Also, we can't worship or embrace the chapels of Brigu. <laughs> right. He is Om. Prabhupada also says that it represents Krishna. And of all the yagyas, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. This is the purest representation of Krishna. And here, Prabhupada says that the Mount Meru was mentioned in the previous verse, but Meru is sometimes movable, whereas Himalayas are never movable. Thus, the Himalayas are greater than Meru. <laughs> Ashwatta sarva vrikshanam Devarshiram Chanaradaha Gandharvanam Chitra Rataha Siddhanam Kapilomuni Of all the trees, 
I am the banyan tree, Ashwata. Actually, I understand that this Ashwata is the specifically the people tree, which is a, a kind of in the family of the Ashwata, of the banyan. Yeah, people. The one that has the pointed leaf. That is the precise Ash, Ashwata, you know, translation of Ashwata. Narada. Narada. Nara means God. And Da means one who gives. So one who gives people love of God, he is Narada. Prabhupada said he's considered the greatest devotee in the universe. And uh, Krishna says of the Gandharvas, I am Chitrata. <laughs> so that's Arjuna's friend. Because when he went to the Indra Lok to, uh, on the request of his father Indra Dev to protect the, the resonance against the Nivata Kavachas, then there he met Chitrata and they became friends. And Chitrata taught him the art of singing and dancing. So Arjuna must have been very happy to hear that his friend Chitrata is a representation of Krishna, that Krishna is Chitrata. Um, I can't remember. I don't. I remember there was Gandharvas in the, some river. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Those in the Murli Dar Ashram, you better be careful, right? <laughs> it's. Of course, Sunni will come and attack you. <laughs> yes, I'm giving you your just desserts. <laughs> I don't remember that pastime myself, but... <laughs> but anyway, that, that, that must have obviously been before he went to Indraloka and like this, and before they became friends. Anyway, Arjun became happy when he heard the name of his friend here at this point. Next verse. Uchay shravasam ashvanam vidhimam amritod bhavan airavatam gajendranam naranam cha naradipam Of horses known me to be uchay shrava, produced during the churning of the ocean for nectar. Of lordly elements, I am Aravata, and among men, I am the monarch. It's mentioned that uh, Bhagadatta, the f famous one who ride on the, rode on the elephant during the Mahabharata war, he had an elephant who was a descendant of Aravata. So it seems that that's why he was such a huge elephant. People were afraid. Somehow. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. Chai Shrava. Yeah, they both came from this uh, churning activity. Prabhupada writes there. Aravata and Uchai Shrava both came from that churning between the devas and the asuras. 28. Ayudhanam aham vajram denunam asmikamadhuk prajanaschasmi kandarpa sarpanam asmi vasukihi Of weapons, I am the thunderbolt. Among cows, I am the sur surabhi. Of causes for prerequisites, for procreation, I am Kandarpa, the god of love, and of serpents, I am Vasuki. So this uh, word Sarpa 
means a one-headed serpent. Whereas in the next verse, the word Naga is given, that's a many-headed serpent. Someone may say that if Krishna is Kandarpa, then free love is all right. Prabhupada mentioned something about this in the commentary. Now, that Kandarpa represents Krishna, but sex for sense gratification only is, does not represent Krishna, but only for the generation of good children. Okay, 29. Anantas chasmi naganam varuna yadasam aham pitrina varyama chasmi yamasam yamatam aham of the many-hooded Nagas, I am Ananta. And among the aquatics, I am the demigod Varuna. Of departed ancestors, I am Ar Aryama. And among the dispensers of law, I am Yama, the lord of death. Interesting that Yama and Aryama are mentioned in the same line because they uh, switched jobs, <laughs> right? Aryama became, went to Yamaloka when uh, Yamaraj came as Yudhisthira, I believe. As Vidura, sorry. Yeah. Okay, 13. Praladas chasvi daityanam kala kalayatam maham mrigaram cha mragendroham vainateyas cha pakshinam. Among the daitya demons, I am the devoted Pralad. Among subduers, I am time. Among beasts, I am the lion. And among birds, I am Garuda. We're going to take a look in the Bhagavatam here. 3.6.2 Someone might say, oh, Krishna is Prahlad among the demons, therefore Krishna is a demon. Of course, Prahlad himself is not a demon. Well, he's born in the family of demons. It's Kala, Kaliyatam, Aham. Among the subduers, I am time. If we look in Bhagavatam 362, we see the verse, Kala, Sangyam, Tada, Devim, Vibrachaktim, Arukrama. Trayo, Vingshati, Tatvanam, Ganam, Yugapad, Avishat. The Supreme Lord, then simultaneously entered into the 23 elements with the goddess Kali, his external energy, who alone amalgamates all the different elements. This is in the chapter called The Creation of the Universal Form. So here, in the commentary, Prabhupada writes that time is the energy of the Lord and acts in her own way by the direction of the Lord. This energy is called Kali and is represented by the dark, destructive goddess generally worshipped by persons influenced by the mode of darkness or ignorance in material existence. So this Kali is actually, Durga is actually time, a form of Krishna's time energy. And Prabhupada says, there are many subduing principles, but time wears down all things in the material universe and so represents Krishna. And it's interesting in the Sanskrit, Mirganam, of the animals, I am Murgendra, the king, which means the lion. And Vaitaneya, Chapakshinam, of the birds, I am Vaitaneya, or Garuda. So actually the um, original form of Garuda is Sri Dhamma, the cowherd boy. And he expands as Garuda in Vaikuntha. And then he expands again into, the, into Swarga as the son of Vinata, which is, who is also Garuda. But he's the one you read about in the Mahabharata who picked up the elephant and the tortoise and saw, uh, you know, placed them in the tree, and he went to chase after the pot of nectar to free his mother, Vinata, who Kadru was holding, and like this, this whole lila in, in the Adi Parva. 
So this is the demigod Garuda. So the difference between him and the carrier of Vishnu. So there are different expansions. And they actually all the devotees of the Lord have their original form in Goloka Vrindavan as a Brijabasi, <laughs> a resident of Vrindavan. Pavanam pavatam asmi rama shastra britam aham jasharam makaras chasmi shrotasam asmi janavi Of purifiers I am the wind. And of wielders of weapons, I am Rama. Of fishes, I am the shark, the Makara. And of flowing rivers, I am the Ganges, Janavi. So here, Rama, Shastra, uh, Shastra Bhritam, means Parasharam. According to Vishnu, Chakravarti Thakur, and Baladevidya Bhushan. Although Ramachandra also has his bow, but the He's uh, not celebrated as such here. But Parsharam is more prominently known as the wielder of weapon. Because he, with that, he, that's basically all he did. <laughs> it's just killed all the Kshatriyas with his chapa, or you can say chopper, <laughs> his axe. <laughs> you know. So... Uh, Interesting point. Actually, in the in the Russian uh, version of the Gita, some devotee, Russian devotee, went to uh, decided that he was going to make his own commentary, and he put Lord Ramachandra is the celebrated hero of the Ramayan, and he has his bow and something something like that. <laughs> but actually, it's not referring to Ramachandra here. Uh, Jashanam of uh, fish, the makara. So the makara is interesting because the makara, Krishna has this makara kundala and also on the flag of Cupid is this, he has called makara dvaja. He has the flag of the makara. So the, but the makara is often uh, translated as shark, but it's a kind of sea monster which is uh, often confounded with the shark, the alligator or the dolphin. Because sometimes it is said Krishna has dolphin-shaped earrings, right? But it, Makara is the exact creature. Of course, it seems to be some o almost some kind of mythical creature. Although we know it's true, but it's we're not familiar with this kind of sea monster. But that's about as close as we can get to some kind of shark or alligator or something. Um, Vishnu Chakravarti talk going back to Parshuram. He uh, makes a comment about that. He explains, he says, because he's an Avesh avatar, a special jiva empowered by Bhagavan and endowed with his shakti, he is included among the vibhutis of the Lord. And he, he quotes that in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, the Padma Purana is cited. And there it is said, O Devi, I've explained the entire history of the Shakti Avesh avatar, Jamadagnya which means Parshuram, the son of Jamadagni. So there he gives some evidence that uh, Parshuram is indeed a Shaktivesh avatar. So therefore he's concluded uh, here as one of the vibhutis of the Lord and that he's a jiva. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a Padma Purana verse which says this. I don't have the Sanskrit though. Okay. Anyway, we can check that. We'll, maybe I'll do some more research about Parashara. Find out the real truth. <laughs> is he a Jiva or is he Vishnu? Because there seems to be conflicting evidence on this point. 32. Sarganam Madhirantascha Madhyam Chaibaham Arjuna Adhyatma Vidya Vidyanam Vara Prabhadatam Aham Of all creations, I am the beginning and the end and also the middle. O Arjun, of all sciences, I am the spiritual science of the self, and among logicians, I am the conclusive truth. 
So here, Krishna is describing sarga, uh, the material or insentient creation, whereas in the first verse, uh, verse 20, he was describing of sentient beings, bhutana. But here he says, sarganam adir antas cha madhyam cha. Right? Because otherwise it's the same thing, the same, he's not repeating himself. He's the beginning, middle and end of both the in inert and conscious beings. And of all vidyas or uh, processes of knowledge, he is the adhyatma vidya or the atma gyan, knowledge of the self. And of the pravadatam, kind of among logicians, ways of arguing, Krishna is badaha. And Prabhupada describes the three kinds of pravadatam. Jalpa, vitanda, and vada. So when one is arguing and continuously finding fault with one's opponents, then it's called jalpa. The, the different kind of deceptive means. And vitanda is also like that, some quibbling, uh, merely trying to defeat the opponent. But vada is when one is uh, interested to find the truth. And in this way he's giving some arguments and then listening to other arguments and then he's trying to weigh them and this way understand that. So that is Krishna, who is the supreme truth. Text 33. Aksharanam makarosmi dvandva samasi kasyacha aham evakshaya kalo dataham mishvato mukha of letters I am the letter A. And among compounds, I am the dual compound. I am also inexhaustible time. And of creators, I am Brahma. So, A is all-pervading, yet it's invisible in all the letters of Sanskrit. So Krishna is like that. Therefore, it's considered to be the best of all the letters. And of all the samas, or the compound words, you know, there's, uh, I don't know, there's about six kinds of samas. Karmadharaya, Mruguhi, and uh, Dvandva, and I forget, there's other. So these are, in the other kind of samasas, or uh, when you add these words together and you drop the ending, then... Uh, the other ones, there's some stress, either on the first or the second. The first one is prominent, or the second one is prominent, or sometimes when they join together, they come up with a third meaning. But the first one, the Dvandva Samas, is considered the best because there's equal meaning or equal stress on both, both the first and the second word of the combination, like Rama Krishna or Radha Krishna. And they're both equally appreciated, you could say. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says this Akshaya Kala here is describing Mahakala Rudra. So it seems that Kali and Kala are Rudra, they're like time, they both represent time. Husband and wife team of time. <laughs> And of course, the Vishvata Mukha means the faces in all directions, which is Brahma. He is the Data, or the Creator. And Krishna is, he represents Krishna, the most powerful demigod and creator in the universe. Text 34. Mrityu sabaharas chaham udbhavas chabavishyatam 
Kirti Shri Bhakcha Nariram Smritir Medha Dritikshama I am all devouring death and I am the generating principle of all that is yet to be. Among women, I am fame, fortune, fine speech, memory, intelligence, steadfastness, and patience. So here Krishna says, I am death and birth. Because Udbhavas means birth, basically. Uh, right? All devouring death and Udbhavas Chabavishatam. So that means birth of all the future transformations of the jivas. Bhavishyatam means existences in the future, and Udbhavas means birth. So of all the transformations or the vikaras of the jivas, Krishna is the janma or the birth. So he's birth and death. Basically, that's what it means. And then we have the seven quality, feminine qualities. Of course, there's many feminine qualities, but here he says, of them, I am the seven. So we see that it's actually true that women are famous, beautiful, and they speak very nicely. Usually they can very easily learn other languages. And uh, usually the language teachers are women. You know, They're very good at speech, fine speech, cultured speech. They usually have women in the news, right? Right? In the news shows. Because <laughs> their speech is paka, first class. And they the other four qualities are also there. Good memory, uh, fine intelligence, dhriti, like determination or firmness, and also kshama, which not only means patience, but also forgiveness. So a lady is also very forgiving, like Draupadi, immediately forgave Ashatama, right? Even though he didn't deserve it. <laughs> but the word cha indicates that the wives of Dharma are also Krishna. According to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, because actually all of these words indicate a person too in the Bhagavatam. We see that Kirti, Meda and Driti were married to Dharma. Or Muni. And Smriti was married to Angira. They're all uh, mainly uh, daughters of Daksha. And Kshama was married to Palaha. And Sri is a daughter of Brigu and uh, Kyati. And, and he, she was later accepted by Lord Vishnu as his wife, Sri. And then Vak is a daughter of Lord Brahma. So you, the verse can be seen in these two ways, that uh, Krishna is these qualities, and also that these very pious ladies represent him and they're his vibhutis. Yes, they are very intelligent. There's different kinds of intelligence, though. Right? Right. Usually ladies are very intelligent for certain things, mainly for material affairs. They're very expert at managing the household and uh, accounting and, you know, the money. And uh, in academics also they're very good. I was teaching for like seven, eight years in Bhaktivedanta uh, Manor and my best students were women. They got the best grades and academically they're quite good. So they do have, you know, certain kinds of intelligence. Men have other kinds of intelligence. So understanding higher spiritual subjects in renunciation and seeing the temporary nature of this world, things like this. So that could be considered more important, perhaps, at least by the men. <laughs> and, probably, <laughs> and probably by, you know, advanced spiritualists. Of course, when ladies come, you know, when they actually come to higher levels of bhakti, then they also become detached from the, from the subtle and gross bodies, and they also develop that intelligence because Krishna gives them. If they are tesham satadayuktanam, then dadami yogam tam. He gives them the same intelligence. 
So certainly ladies are intelligent. I've noticed also that sometimes if I tell some brahmachari to manage something, it's usually not so expertly done. But if you tell a lady to do it, then it will be very uh, carefully clean, everything will be orderly and and uh, like this. <coughs> so often ladies have this ability to, to, I mean, to manage small things, I don't know, maybe not a whole country or whatever, but manage a room, manage a kitchen, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yes, that's true. He said they're like, a, like, ch like boys, discrimination like boys. Yeah. Well, ultimately, you can say intelligence is that discrimination. But there are, we know there's different kinds of intelligence. Yeah. In the Hari Bhakti Vilas, it mentions that women should never be given positions of authority. Nowadays, uh, there was one lady, a devotee, a disciple of Prabhupada named Urmila in, in America and she has some persons who want to take diksha from her. So she went through the uh, local process and they presented to the GBC. So now ISKCON has to decide whether they're going to allow ladies to become gurus or not. So it's interesting. What will, you know. And, uh, you know, the we have the Shastric Advisory Council, which I created a couple of years ago. Gopi Pranadana, Jyutta Karma, Sahotra Swami, Urmila is also on the group. And uh, we invited uh, uh, Devamrita Prabhu to participate, particularly in this discussion about ladies becoming gurus, because we realized that actually all of us are Westerners, although everyone's philosophical, but we wanted to have uh, someone from Bharat who has the cultural background and they can give perhaps different uh, view uh, and so forth and, ar and arguments and so forth. So we invited him. Very soon we'll start discussing this point and it will probably last for at least six months or maybe a year because uh, it's a kind of... Uh, not primary, but it's an important step for ISKCON, whether they're going to actually allow to have ladies to, ex you know, accept the sat we'll have lady gurus, you know. Interesting. But in our, in our uh, history, the Gaudiya Vaishnava history, we do have lady spiritual masters like Janava and uh, Ganga Mata. What's the other lady's name? Can you? Anyway, I forget my name. There were a number of ladies, and those were just the famous ones. So we'll see what will happen. Stay tuned. <laughs> Text thirty five. Brihat Sama Tata Sam Nam Gayatri Chanda Samaham Masanam Margashir Shoham. Ritunam Kusumakara. Of the hymns in the Sama Veda, I am the Brihat Sama. And of poetry, I am the Gayatri. Of months, I am Margashirsha, November, December. And of seasons, I am the flower bearing spring. <laughs> Jai. So Krishna said before, of the Vedas, I am the Sama Veda. Now he says, of the, of the Sama Veda, I am the Brihat Sama. So the, the Sama Veda is divided into two, which are the two two wings of Garuda. And it represents the Brihat Sama, and the other one is the Ratantara Sama. So Garuda's wings are the two divisions of the Sama Veda. And it's mentioned in the third canto, chapter 21. Text 34, when Karada Muni heard the Samaveda hymns from Garuda's wings as the, as the Lord left Bindu Sarovara, right, he was flying away on the back of Garuda, and uh, Karadama heard the, this Brihat Sama, <laughs> because he was a self-realized person, uh, 
Prabhupada mentions only the devotees can hear this from the wings of Garuda. <laughs> oh, where are we here? This is the wrong one. If you're interested, I'll just read a little part of that. While the stage look, stood looking on, the Lord left by the pathway leading to Vaikuntha, a path extolled by all great liberated souls. The sage stood listening as the hymns forming the basis of the Samaveda were vibrated by the flapping wings of the Lord's carrier, Garuda. Uh, he says, With his two wings, Garuda began to vibrate the Samaveda, which is chanted by the great sages to pacify the Lord. The Lord is worshipped by Brahma, Shiva, Garuda and other demigods with selected poems and great sages worship him with the hymns of Vedic literature such as Upanishads and Samaveda. These Samaveda utterances are automatically heard by the devotee when another great devotee of the Lord, Garuda, flaps his wings. So, uh, <coughs> so in Indralok, when they do a yagya for Indra, they sing this. It, when they're doing this, what is called the Ati Ratra Yagya for Indra, they particularly sing this Brihat Sama, which is considered to be the most beautiful, rich, melodious song in the Sama Veda. Prabhupada mentions it also. He says it's also sung at midnight. I don't know that, that. I guess that means midnight in Indra Loka, <laughs> or perhaps the the uh, Vandis, those who recite the Vedas, may also do that here on the earth at midnight. Uh, Gayatri Chandasamaham of the old uh, Chandas, he said, "I'm the Gayatri." Of all the months, I am Margashirsha, which is this time, right? November, December. And Prabhupada mentions because there are people are in India, at least, and in other countries too, they're harvesting the crops from the fields. It's a very uh, happy time for people because they're getting all the crops. And it's also, like in Vrindavan, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Right? Huh? Well, not the beginning. The beginning of December is not too bad. And of the seasons, Ritu, which is also called Ritu Raj, is uh, Akara, or spring. Everybody likes spring. And this also, Prabhupada mentions, there's many festivals in the spring, like Basant Ras, and there's the Swing Festival, and so many beautiful festivals of Leelas of Krishna. Okay, 36. Dutam chalyatam asmi tejas tejas venam maham jayosmi vyabasayosmi satpam satvadvatam maham I am also the gambling of cheats and I am the splendid of the splendor. I am victory, I am adventure and I am the strength of the strong. <clears throat> Prabhupada says, Krishna can be more deceitful than any mere man. If Krishna chooses to deceive a person, no one can surpass him in his deceit. <laughs> so his greatness is not one-sided, it's multifaceted greatness. <laughs> and of course we know how Krishna is great, famous for being a cheater. <laughs> He told the gopis that, yes, I'll come back after tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. <laughs> then he left them crying in Vrindavan for so many years to exemplify the, the high level of their intense Mahabhav Prem for the whole world to see and for other various other reasons too. So... 
here, uh, Vyavasaya, can mean adventure, but it also can mean enterprise or endeavor. So Krishna is the endeavor of those who work hard. <coughs> It's kind of more, you know, exciting translations. I am adventure. <laughs> Just I am I am endeavor. <laughs> I am enterprise. <laughs> and of course, Krishna's sattvam sattvavadhammaham. Here it means st strong. So he lifted Govardhan Hill with one finger of his left hand. Vrishninam Vasudevosmi Pandavanam Dhananjayaha Muninam Apyaham Vyasa Kavina Moshana Kavihi Of the descendants of Vrishni, I am Vasudev. So that's interesting. Because Balade Vidyabhushan says that refers to Balaram. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that it refers to Vasudev, Krishna's father. That the, the, the long A comes from the suffix an, which is added to the name Vasudev, so then becomes Vasudev. So he has some, uh, you know, grammatical explanation. Because, and he, and he, and f furthermore, he explains that, uh, that, um, Vasudev, who is Krishna's first expansion, uh, is not a vibhuti. He is an anksha of the Lord. So here he says that the vibhutis are being mentioned, so it can only be Vasudev, his father, who represents Krishna as a vib his vibhuti. So he gives his argument. But uh, because Prabhupada generally follows Balade Vidyabhushan uh, when there's any, you know, differences. <laughs> so Prabhupada says that, it, yes, he says that uh, both Krishna and Balaram appeared as the son of Vasudev, so they can both co be called Vasudev, which is true. And from another point of view, because Krishna that believes is Vrind Vrindavan, all the forms of Krishna that appear elsewhere are his expansions. Vasudeva is Krishna's immediate expansion. So Vasudeva is not different from Krishna. So it couldn't be, well, it, okay, say it can be Vasudeva too. It is to be understood that Vasudeva referred here is Baladeva or Balaram because he is the source of all incarnations. And he's also the source of Vasudeva. So you can see that, you know, the Acharyas, they also have their own, you know, slant on these things. But it's interesting to hear that they have, you know, their own arguments. Now, when Krishna said, Pandavanam, you know, Arjuna was thinking, yeah, Yudhisthira. <laughs> then he said, Dhananja, he was shocked. <laughs> Me? <laughs> he was surprised. He thought, surely must be Yudhisthira. Krishna said, no, you, <laughs> Dalanja. <laughs> so all the Munis I'm Vyas, and all the Kavis I'm Ushana or Shukracharya. Because he's quite a sage, a Kavi. He can even bring people back to life, right? Like he did to Bali. I mean, that's pretty powerful. <laughs> that comes from Krishna. All right. Dando damayatam asmi nitir asmi chikishitam maunam chayvasmi guyanam gyanam gyanavatam aham. Among all means of suppressing lawlessness, I am punishment, danda. And of those who seek victory, I am niti, morality. Of secret things, I am silence. And of the wise, I am wisdom. <laughs> 38. So, uh, Danda. So, Kshatriyas need some chastising agent. 
and that power by which rogues come to the right path, that is Krishna. And niti means proper behavior. Uh, proper behavior establishes a stable victory, winning not by cheating, but by niti, proper behavior. It's more stable. And secret things. Uh, those who know the absolute truth, I am knowledge in them. So Krishna is the secret things of those who know the absolute truth. Prabhupada writes, among the confidential activities of hearing, thinking and meditating, silence is most important because by silence one can make progress very quickly. Yes, that's true. But when you're meditating and thinking, better to be silent. Right? <laughs> There's time for both. We should have time. It's good to be alone for some time because then you can digest all the things you're talking about. Yachapi sarva bhutanam bijam tadaham arjuna nantad asti vina yatsyan maya bhutam characharam. Furthermore, O Arjun, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being, moving or non moving, that, that can exist without me. Prabhupada writes, everything has a cause, and that cause or seed of manifestation is Krishna. Without Krishna's energy, nothing can exist. So now we can see Krishna is kind of summarizing and kind of winding down, right, in this verse. Of everything, I am the seed of everything, Arjuna. Now he's summarizing, he's coming to the end. Nantosti mama divyanam vibhutinam parantapa esha tu deshata prokto vibhutir vistaro maya O mighty conquerors of enemies, parantapa, there is no end to my divine manifestations. What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. So udeshata means some examples, but it means in brief. So Prabhupada writes a mere indication, I have told, of my vibhutis. Because uh, na anto sti, and there's no end to my mama divyanam vibhutinam. Now 41. Again, he's winding up or winding down, you could say, summing up. Yes. For Krishna, there's no difference between material and spiritual. And he can move them back and forth however he likes. Yeah, they're material. But when you see them in light of Krishna, then they become spiritual. Depends on your vision, really. Just like Prabhupada, when a rich man came to see him who was famous, and Prabhupada would show him some respect. You know? And he, he would say that this man's rich because Krishna has given him this power. So a, a pure devotee sees everything connected with Krishna, even the material things. But the vibhutis are also material. I mean, as far as material can stretch, but they can't stretch far away from Krishna, because <laughs> they come from Krishna. Yad yad vimutti mat sattvam srimad urjitam eva va tattar eva va gacchatvam mamate jamsa sambhava Know that all opulent, beautiful and glorious creation spring from but a spark of my splendor. So to, to simultaneously describe all the vibhutis not spoken, the Lord speaks this verse. Right? Everything which is Srimad, opulent, beautiful, Ujitam means powerful or glorious, all of these things. What else do we have? Vibhutimat, so means opulence. Okay, finally, the last verse. 
अथवा बहुनते नाखिम ज्ञाते न तवर्जुन विष्टाभ्यादम कृत्स्म मिकांक्षे नो जगत But what need is there, Arjun, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire universe. So, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur writes, "You should just understand the essence by the partial aspect of myself, as the Antaryami Purush of the Prakriti. I support the entire universe." He's talking about Mahavishnu. As a substratum, I support it. As the presiding authority, I preside over it, and as the controller, I control it. Being all pervasive, I pervade it, and as the creator, I am its cause. We have another translation of this verse, which was in that same verse talking about Kali, three six two. Listen carefully to this translation, and a different translation by Sri Lupa Upan, in his purport to three six two. O Arjuna, there is no necessity of your knowing about my innumerable energies, which act in various ways. I enter into the material creation by my partial plenary expansion, Paramatma, in all the universes and in all the elements thereof. And thus the work of creation goes on. A little bit different. So this is actually the word eka angsha, and it's in the instrumental tritya case, ekangshena. Uh, so by Krishna's one angsha, he pervades and supports and controls and the whole universe, everything there. So that that whether it's Mahavishnu, Garba, Daksha Vishnu, or Shri Daksha Vishnu, it's the same person. He's the the super soul of the universe and the super soul of all beings within the universe. And let's see, I can read. So there are eighty-two vibhutis given in this chapter, and to perform. Pure devotional service in Nanya Bhakti is given in chapter nine, and to increase devotion, Krishna has explained his vibhutis to Arjuna. No one can actually know Krishna, but those who do become free from all sins. By one's endeavor, he cannot know Krishna. Prabhupada writes in his commentary. Uh, If one thoroughly studies the different descriptions of the opulences and expansions of Krishna's energy, then one can understand without any doubt the position of Lord Sri Krishna, and can fix his mind in the worship of Krishna without deviation. Because somebody might hear chapter nine and think, "Well, yeah, I can worship Krishna by worshiping the devas, or the Visharup, or something like this." But by by Krishna des- describing this vibhuti tattva, it be- becomes very clear that you know these are Krishna's energies, and he's the source of them, and he's Brahm. I mean, even Brahma and Shiva are his vibhutis. So then one becomes fixed in Bhagavat tattva, and then he can devote himself exclusively to the worship of Lord Krishna, who is the summum bonum. The Supreme Lord. So this is, if one understands the Vibhuti Tattva, then he can come to Ananya Bhakti. There will be no other obstacles on the path to Ananya Bhakti, because it becomes very clear, as Prabhupada said, what is the position of Lord Sri Krishna after understanding this chapter. Prabhupada writes, furthermore, the Lord is all pervading by His expansion of His partial representation, the Super Soul who enters into everything that is. Pure devotees, therefore, concentrate their minds in Krishna consciousness in full devotional service. Therefore, they are always situated in the transcendental position. Devotional service and worship of Krishna are very clearly indicated in this chapter, in verses eight through eleven. That is the way of pure devotional service. He mentions the Chatur Shloki. So this is his summary, and it's very similar to 
uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's commentary on this verse. So, and he says to remove misconceptions, Krishna speaks, chapter ten, that the devas like Brahma and Shiva are nothing but his vibhutis. So one understands his vibhutis, then he, there remains no other impediments to Ananya Bhakti. He can just enter right in. And he says that after understanding Vibhuti Tattva, my devotees get knowledge of Bhagavad Tattva and the pure devotion, and with pure devotion they worship me. So Prabhupada just kind of uh, paraphrased and summarized the statements. That's fit for chapter 10. Someone has some questions or some comments? Because the universal form also has faces in all directions. Right? Vishvata means in all directions. Mukha means face. So it could be Brahma or it could be the Visharup. But here in that data, right? Lord Brahma is the creator of the universe. Whereas the Visharup is the universe, you could say, you know. So in that verse, it means he is the. It means Lord Brahma. I mean, many words can be found in different contexts, and then you have to see what is the context of the other words next to the the common word. I mean, it's like kama also can mean lust, or it can mean kama dev, or it can mean kama nuga bhakti. <laughs> Right. It, can, it can have many forms. So the context is very important. That's why Nirukti is one of the Angas, Vedangas, the six Vedangas, to understand everything in the context. Something else? So you're all fixed in Vibhuti Tattva? I think you already know these things. So. But you can see how it's uh, uh, important for persons who are coming to bhakti that they hear chapter 10. Because it clears away all the misconceptions, especially the devas and so forth. And then they can understand very clearly that Krishna is the source of these things. It was very similar to that... Uh, you know, that section about uh, uh, Virat Rupa, Aham Kratu, or Aham Jagya, Swadaham, Aham Asadam. So if Krishna is all of these things, then just worship Krishna. He's the, he's the source, he's the creation. And he's saying, that, and at the end particularly, he says, he told you, God, just with a small fragment of myself, I pervade and I support the whole universe. So nobody else has said that. <laughs> You know, no demigod has said such things. So it's very clear that Krishna is the, you know, the supreme, Swayam Bhagavan. Okay, so we'll, we can stop then. We we won't go any further because I I have to prepare the next chapter. <laughs> so if you want some questions, you can have time for questions. Uh, Yes. They, well, it depends on the circumstance. I mean, generally you wouldn't recite the tenth chapter to a, a group of college students, you know, because the whole thing seems, you know, kind of Hinduish or kind of mystical or and cultish or, you know what I mean? You know, what do they know about Skanda and Brigu and... Prahlad and you know it's all for them it's Greek so you know it's like we don't we wouldn't uh, explain such kind of thing and generally you know I mean the presentations are more simple we, yeah you could say we avoid those things because uh, the, the people they don't have any faith so why should you test their faith when the faith hasn't even sprouted right I mean, even devotees, after some years, they still have difficulty with that. But generally, I mean, if the devotee has good faith, 
then even he may not fully understand that, but because he's getting so much directly from the process of bhakti, uh, that he has faith that all of this is the absolute truth. So he thinks, well, somehow it's true. <laughs> you know, and then, maybe the devotee develops faith in the Shastra, and then a lot more than the, you know, faith in the scientists who, you know, I mean, the scholars and the scientists, if you actually see the, how they live, then you, your faith in them would, you know, break down quite quickly. Because <laughs> they're all, you know, woman hunters and they drink and they smoke and they curse and they, you know, they're, they're not so sattvic, pure beings. <laughs> you know, a lot of them. So that's another thing, like the character of the persons involved gives you some indication. And we also know that, uh, you know, the scientists are using these instruments which are based upon their ocular perceptions of pratyaksha, jnana. So we understand that the Bhada Jiva is limited in his in his perceptions when he's using his senses. But the sages and those who are above the four defects, and especially, especially Krishna himself, then uh, they can, who's Krishna himself created the whole universe, so he can explain it a lot <laughs> better than any scientist who's ju you know, just trying to figure out what's going on up there by you know, looking through this big glass and it's, you know, millions of miles away to some other planet, some other star. <laughs> so I think devotees have faith, in, but uh, as far as new people, yeah, generally we avoid those topics. We let them, you know, get a taste of bhakti and develop a little faith first. Gradually they'll kind of come across those things. And then... Uh, you know, then we'll have to deal with this, and we have we have some arguments, empirical arguments to validate the scripture, based on the Sanskrit language itself, based on the statements in the Puranas, and you know which uh, preceded medical examination and uh, scientific uh, lab laboratory studies. I mean, you know, like the, the Vedas and even the, our Bhagavatam describes one chuti, which is the time it takes the sun to pass over one atom. You know, so we have atoms, we have the description of vimanas, and there's the description of embryology in Kapila Muni's teaching. You know, that was so many thousands of years before. I mean, even if they accept the, even if they think the Bhagavatam is only a thousand years old, so it's hundreds of years, almost a thousand years before they started the embryology and studying the, the growth of the child in the mother's womb. And I mean, how did, that, how did these sages know these things? If they're living in caves, scratching on the walls of the caves, you know, some hieroglyphics. You know what I mean? How do they understand about the, these things, about the atom and embryology? And why did... Uh, uh, you know, great scientists like Werner, Werner von Braun, why was he searching through the Vedas to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, glean the principles for his molecular, molecular propulsion theories, which he used in the V2 rockets in NASA in America in the, in the early 60s. And, uh, you know, this, uh, why did... Um, uh, Rick Briggs, who was a researcher for NASA, uh, when he was asked to try to find out some natural language which they can use in the computers in NASA space programs, he couldn't find any natural language but Sanskrit. I use Sanskrit because it is very precise and it can express the very precise mathematical formula of uh, such high, you know, physics and so forth. Only the Sanskrit can do that. But this is the ancient language of uh, of India. 
you know, but the the indology, early indolo, Christian indologists try to brainwash everyone so that they, these people are just bar, barbarians and they don't know anything and they're uncultured and they just have some myths. But look, they're using the language of Sanskrit in the NASA space program computers <laughs> to express these ideas. So, the, I mean, there, there are enough uh, empirical validations for someone who is intelligent but they still have to have a little faith in bhakti and the faith in Krishna. You can't do without that, because otherwise, if you don't have faith, you can just you know, continue to look for faults. If you're a skeptic, I mean, you can also doubt your own existence, <laughs> which is a kind of science or philosophy. You know what I mean? You've heard of that before? What is it called again? Yeah, but there's a word. English word. And I know there's people that, you know, they 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 don't even they don't even have faith in in the existence of the world, huh? Yeah. So you know, I mean, you can take uh, skepticism quite far. <laughs> so the people have to have some faith, but better to wait until that faith uh, develops a little bit, a few years before you begin describing, you know, about the planets and about uh, huge birds that fly from one planet to another and pick up elephants and, <laughs> you know, all these things. <laughs> I mean, it, there are a lot of things which are hard to... F <clears throat> I mean, in India, you know, you accept there's people with many heads, but for a Westerner, that's really bizarre, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Brahma's got four heads and Shiva's got five heads and universal form has so many heads and then you got Hanuman <coughs> the monkey and you know and you know Gajendra is offering prayers Garuda you know you know the, the whole thing seems really bizarre <laughs> to a western person <laughs> what to do any other interesting questions? Well, as far as I remember, uh, a lot of the yeah, they're 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 like songs or hymns, written in these, as you say, different chandas. And uh, in the a lot of them come from the Rig Veda. And as far as I understand, there it's written in prose. So then it's like composed in poetry, and. Uh, the songs are there, so that the the priests, during the certain yagyas, like the Atiratra yagya for Indra, then they break out the Samaveda to, you know, the chapter <laughs> that they want, and they sing that Brihat Sama. And then in the Yajurveda, this, it's kind of like they have uh, things written in the sequence of the yagya, how to perform the yagya and the different mantras in the, in this order that they're needed in the in the yagya. But the Samaveda is mainly just different songs. Other than that, I don't know, because I never studied the Samaveda, <laughs> you know, in depth. But just from what I've read from Prabhupada's books and, you know, a few other th places, some commentaries and things like this. Like in the, you know, it's like, there it is in the third canto, Kardamamuni, you know, Garuda's flying away and he hears the Samaveda, you know. And it's mentioned that the one wing is the Brihat Sama and the other wing is this Ratantra. So he heard this from his, the wings of Garuda. That's even more bizarre. Well, when it comes to Vaidusha Pratyaksha, when it comes to the level Vaidusha Pratyaksha, it's not that, I mean, a pure devotee may be at Nishta or a Ruchi or a Sakti also, but generally I understand that Bhava is this place where all these mystical things happen because he rises above the modes of nature and the Sambhita and uh, Ladini Shaktis descend upon him and becomes imbued with bhakti. So he's he has a 
you know, spiritual cog cognizance as from the Sambit Shakti, that he can actually see Leela going on, and he gets his Sarup Siddhi at that time. Arasakti, the person may get like a very brief darshan of the Lord. It sometimes happens. He get, but at Bhava, then it it can ha it happens, you know, regularly or more, you know, whatever, more regularly. But these are sporty. They are very brief, you know, like revelations where there's some seeing of some lila or the Lord's form, you know, the Lord may come and laugh and blow, blow in his flute and then disappear, you know, like this. But in prema, then these things are expanded where then the person actually sees like a whole list of lilas one after another and he's just in a kind of samadhi, like the whole day or maybe for three days. <laughs> he may be laying there and his disciples may think that, oh, what's what's happened to him? And then he may come out of his samadhi after some days and he's, he was in Krishna Leela, yeah, like this. So, so, I mean, pure devotion can begin at any, plane, at any point, but particularly at Nishta, it's a, a prominent, uh, important stage because there 75% of all the anarthas are cleared away and the distractions are gone and he's fixed in the practice. And uh, so, I mean, basically the hankerings are, are gone. Rasasat, the, the enjoyment. And then later, you know, that uh, it's like the beginning of the, you know, Brahma Bhutta platform, but fully there is Bhava, because then he's completely free from all the modes of nature. So pure devotee can. I, I still I, somehow I, I guess I should bring this quotation, in, but there, Prabhupada mentions that the pure devotee can also be in the intermediate level. So yeah, anyone who's on the path of pure devotion, he can be considered a pure devotee. That's a very liberal definition. And then later, and then a, a more practical definition is okay at nishta. And then the full definition is. Bhava, Prema, like Mahabhagavat level. But even in Mahabhagavat there's, th you know, different levels. Like when Narada, he saw, or he heard the Lord, and he was a, a considered a Mahabhagavat, but he was still attached to the peace of the forest and the beauty of Sattva Gun. So there's some slight tinge of Sattva Gun there. And then there's... Um, or Narada later, oh, is it? Well, Shukadeva Goswami is given the example of the next higher level. When he's above the modes of nature, but he hasn't fully understood his relationship with the Lord. And then finally, Narada in his previous life is, the, is given as an example of the full blown Mahabhagavat, who is above all the modes and he has full realization of his relationship with the Lord. So even Mahabhagavat, there's different levels. So then what to speak of? You know, it's, it's said that one of them has two feet on the ground and is looking up into the spiritual world. The second one he has one foot here and one foot there. And the third one is, has both feet in the spiritual world. Like this, yeah. There are names in the Bhagavad Sanda, uh, in the Bhagavad Sanda, in the Yuga Goswami Sandarbhas. There are Sanskrit terms for them, but I I can't remember them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I didn't give the names there either. Not the not the Sanskrit term. There are Sanskrit terms. I didn't think it was necessary. I, wanted, I didn't want to make it too scholarly <laughs> to scare away the readers, because already there was a lot of Sanskrit and a lot of quotations. And okay, let's stop now. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. <laughs>